Hello, you're listening to Advisor Insider, powered by ETF.com. I'm your host, Jeff Benjamin, Wealth Management Editor here at ETF.com. And today we're talking with Matt Markovich, Head of Product and Capital Markets at Trader ETFs. We're going to be talking about leveraged ETFs. To our listeners who are retail investors or financial advisors, I'd like to invite you to participate in our newly released Global Investor Survey. Your responses will help shape the future of the ETF investing landscape and be released in an exclusive ETF report this fall. All right. How you doing, Matt? Thanks for being here. Doing great, Jeff. Thank you for having me. All right. Let's let's get into this leveraged and inverse ETF landscape, which I know you're you're deeply involved in. Uh it's a it's a space that was created in 2006 with the first leveraged ETFs. The, sp- the category now has, I think, in excess of uh, $100 billion in leveraged and inverse ETFs. You guys were the first to launch the single stock ETFs, which are always leveraged or inverse. Otherwise, you just buy the stock um, in 2022. So, and, and you just came out with some strategies that we're going to get into in a little bit of detail that uh, kind of extend the reset period. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the reset period. Let's let's first talk about how leveraged and inverse, let's kind of stick to leverage, leverage ETFs work and why they're designed as trading vehicles. If you can start there, Matt. Sure. Yeah. So as you mentioned, uh, leverage and inverse ETFs have been around for 18 years Mm -hmm. and all of them have essentially been created uh, in the exact same fashion, which is that they are meant to deliver amplified returns or leverage returns for Mm -hmm. no more than a day. So if the underlying, you know, index or ETF that the, that the, the leverage ETF is tracking is up 2% and you have a two times long leverage ETF, Mm-hmm. You'll be up 4% for that day. Right. But that day only. So if you hold that ETF over a longer period of time, an ETF that resets performance daily, your actual leverage will stray from what is being offered on a daily basis. So I understand that your performance over the long term will deviate from Let's say your two times leverage is our, our example. And let's say it's two times leverage the S&P 500. Now, over the longer time periods, the longer you go, it will devi- the more it will deviate from twice the performance of the underlying. But let's get a, just a little bit more minutia on why, let's say the S&P 500 is, you know, had a great day. It's up 10% in one day. Your two time leverage ETF is up 20% that day. Now, where do you start the next day with that ETF? Well, you would start at the the same the price at the end of the prior day. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, again, I mean, that's not where the the ETF would open necessarily, just based on on market movement right. and what happened kind of overnight. But your starting point is the end of the prior day, not but- the the day before that day, right? So that everything gets refreshed, essentially clean slate every day of trading. Right. Okay. So how is this reset nuance uh, unique with these leverage strategies then? Well, what happens is when you have, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's say a, an ETF or an, an index that, you know, the leverage ETF is tracking. If there is a, a lot of volatility, meaning up, down, up, up for a couple of days and then down, that is going to skew the path of your returns. So there's mm-hmm. a concept called path dependency. And that really all depends on when you get into the ETF and when you get out. And because daily ETFs are only meant to provide the return, the stated return for a day, as I said, over the longer term, the longer you hold that ETF, mm-hmm. it's going to stray from that leverage that's offered just for that one day. Okay. So clearly these things are designed to be held for a day or a couple of days by design, right? Yes. Yeah. At, 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 at most, again, it right. all depends on, you know, how the, how the, right. you know, the now, underlying that may be trending. The other twist here, and we've talked about this before, Matt, that you have research that shows that people are holding these longer, right? Yeah. And um, 
not only do we have research and data that we've run, um, you know, but we also, uh, we have anecdotal evidence too, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, at Trader, we manage four daily reset ETFs um, and they've been in the marketplace, uh, some of them since, uh, you know, for, for over uh, two and a half years. Uh -huh. And we've learned from having those ETFs because we've gotten emails from clients who have bought them that they're that they are holding them for longer periods of time. And you know, we get questions. Well, I, I don't understand. Um, you know, Tesla was down uh, thirty percent, you know, over the past six months, and uh, your two times, uh, you know, inverse Tesla ETF is actually down five percent. These are all hypothetical numbers. Uh -huh. But, but why is this so? You know, then you have to kind of explain to them one, not meant to be held for longer right. than a day. Um, and then you have to get into this the concept of path dependency and how you know that performance is being reset every day. So between all that, you know, feedback that we've gotten, you know, just as a company, and you know, as I said, the data we've run, um, you know, that was sort of the nexus for these products that we've recently launched. I will say the data does show you know, various, uh, you know, different holding periods depending on, you know, the underlying leverage ETF. But, um, you know, from our data, a lot of these, you know, especially the most, more popular ones are being held from anywhere from tr five trading days to 12 trading days. Um, and, you know, sometimes even longer for some of the, the less popular ones. Why do you think people are holding them long? Do you think they don't know or is it more of an aggressive strategy? If you were, let's say you were super bullish on one of these two times leverage strategies, would it be better to trade in and out, in and out for five days in a row or just sit in it for five days? Well, it's certainly easier. You know, the path of least resistance is uh -huh. to sit in it five days right? Um, and just kind of see how things play out, I guess, in terms right. of return. But, you know, when you go into, you know, using these ETFs or, you know, trading them, you should have a view. How long do I want to hold this? And I think, Jeff, to to answer your question, for me, it's it's sort of two, two, two things, two reasons mm -hmm. why they're holding them for more than a day. The first is they can't access leverage otherwise, right? right? They don't have leverage, you know, on their brokerage platform or if you're a financial advisor, perhaps, mm -hmm. right? Um, right? Not allowed to use leverage for your clients, uh -huh. So using, you know, the daily uh, reset ETFs, it's the path of least resistance. Um, you know, and then the second thing is, um, you know, it's just easier to hold on to it for a day. Right. Right. It's just, it's like versus, you know, it's, it's, it's time consuming, rebalancing your portfolio and the monitoring of it. It's not something that the typical advisor, uh, you know, can do. Right. I mean, the, the most yeah. advisors are, are are charged with, you know, uh, you know, growing and protecting well, you know, clients wealth and, and getting more clients. Um, you know, the portfolio management process is, you know, we're seeing, um, you know, it's the, the, obviously the, the rise in ETF models has been just massive over the past five, 10 years, um, you know, and kind of the outsourcing of, uh, you know, the investment strategies is is you know is is a growing uh, concept in the asset management world um so you know you don't have time to sit there and monitor positions every day uh and the volatility with the with the daily resets is you know is quite high um so it's just easier for folks right. to, to hold them longer term <clears throat> all right well that leads us to your recent launch a suite of eight right eight uh new etfs with, correct uh i think Five of them have weekly resets and three of them have monthly resets. Now, let's start with the weekly. So, yeah, we we, we launched eight uh, ETFs. And right. as you mentioned, um, you know, there were uh, five weeklies and three monthlies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these products were born out of, you know, again, you know, data that we've run and then, you know, anecdotal, you know, feedback, of course. And, you know, we thought, hey, like, this is really odd that, there are no longer reset products out there. The data is showing that people are holding, you know, investors are holding leverage ETFs for more than a day. Again, the 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 outcome um, of, the, of the return stream is, is skewed when you hold it over a longer period of time. Right. And and there are a, a few mutual funds that do offer longer than daily reset, uh, you know, by, by, by two well-known firms out there. But again, it's never been done in ETF land. So uh -huh. that's what we set out to do is, is to create products with, uh, you know, a longer reset and we call them calendar reset ETFs. And that performance, Jeff, will reset instead of daily, the performance will reset on a weekly, monthly, 
or quarterly basis. Now, the the period the reset period, let's take the weekly spies, for example, our 2x mm -hmm. weekly spy, spy B is the ticker. If we were to uh, you know, buy that at the close on a Friday, what we're doing is we're rebalancing or relevering the portfolio the following Friday mm -hmm. to give investor 200% <clears throat> the weekly return of SPY. So if SPY is up 2% on the week, our fund will return, you know, before fees, you know, 4%. If SPY is down 2% on the week, our fund will be down 4%. Again, that's if you held it for the week. You bought it yeah. at the Friday close, I, and then I, you sold it at the Friday close. Yeah, I want to inject there. What happens if uh, you buy it on a Monday, SPY goes bananas on Tuesday, spikes who knows how many percent, a 5% one day gain or something uh, impossible. Could you sell it that day and, and lock in those double gains or no? You got to hold them till the end of the week. Nope. Uh, just like any ETF, you can buy and sell intraday. So, well, I know you can, but I'm saying, do you benefit from the from the two time the leverage the, in the weekly correct. reset? The nav, yeah, the nav of the ETF tracks okay. the path over over the calendar time period. Okay, so they do. So they do. They do have a weekly reset, but you can you can lock in the the two times gains at any point, right? By selling it, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. And and, cool. and and you know, again, it might be more than that, Jeff. Right? Remember, it's yeah. the whole point here again that 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 um, sort of concept of path dependency. It's point to point, right? The mm -hmm. ETF is meant to give you a return over that point to another mm -hmm. point, all right? And it just so, but it happens that instead of daily, our points are stretched out over a week a month or a quarter. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it, it dampens the volatility that, that you're experiencing on a, on a daily basis. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, just to let our audience know, you can, uh, the, the SPY, the S&P 500 is, uh, there, there's a trader two times long weekly and a two times long monthly for SPY. Tickers there are SPYB and SPYM. Uh, also QQQ, two times long weekly, that's QQQW, and the monthly version is MQQQ, uh, and then SOXX, semiconductor ETF, uh, two times long weekly, SOXW, and monthly version SOXM, and then let's you've got a couple of single stock versions here, NV, NVIDIA and Tesla. Uh, I think... NVIDIA is 1.75 times and Tesla is 1.5 times. Is that accurate? Correct. Yeah. TSLW, that's our weekly Tesla. That's one and a half leverage long. Uh -huh. And then NVDW is our uh, what, one. Why the distinctions on the on the leverage from 175 for You mean why the, why the difference? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but essentially the way that, uh, you know, you achieve this leverage is by uh, entering into a swap agreement with a, with a counterparty. Mm -hmm. And there are margin requirements that you have to post for, you know, for the funds, right? The funds posting margin and the more volatile, the underlying asset, mm -hmm. the more money you need to post for margin. Okay. So from that perspective, Tesla and NVIDIA are <clears throat> more volatile than SPY and the Qs. So we have to put a higher amount of margin. And what that does is it gives you sort of less leeway during the month. If a stock, let's say, goes down, um, you know, let's, let's take, or the week rather, if NVIDIA is down, um, you know, 40% during the week, which as we've seen, it doesn't, you know, that's, that's a, you know, a, an event that has never happened, um, you know, not going back as far as we've looked, you know, when we kind of ran our back test, the fund will essentially be insolvent, right? If, you know, if it was at two X and it went to 50% down, you would be a zero, the fund would be at a zero, but because you have to post margin, it can't move 50%. It can only move, you know, let's say 40% down before the fund. Okay. The, so uh, that's why you see all these different leverages for, for a lot of the funds out there. Um, you know, uh, mutual funds, uh, there are a lot of single stock ETFs that offer, you know, less than 
to you know again as, as okay yeah i got that let let me let me ask you about the the downside risk here um with the longer reset periods is there more downside risk in sitting in one of these things for a week or a month or just uh taking a daily reset and riding it for the same period um, I wouldn't say there's more downside risk because it just depends on, um, mm -hmm. you know, the movement of the of the underlying asset, right? Um, yeah. Everything is, like again, a single stock is more idiosyncratic than a you know an index based product like SPY. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wouldn't blanket statement and, and say more risk. What what I think you will have more volatility, Jeff, with the longer reset periods, right? At the end of the day, but again. All the products will deliver a multiple of, you know, whether it's 200%, 150%, whatever it is, uh, of the stated, you know, for, for the, of the, of the performance of, you know, the underlying asset um, for that stated period. So there might be a lot of intra, intra period volatility, but, you know, I wouldn't say there's more risk as you go out because the fund will, whatever it, it will do what it's says it's going to do, which is give you, you know, okay. 200. Do you, uh, do you, in, do you anticipate having inverse versions of longer resets? Yeah, we filed for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, no immediate plans to launch them. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, this is a fairly new concept. Yeah. Uh, old, old habits die hard. Right. And after 18 years of, um, you know, in our view, you know, daily leverage ETFs being kind of misused, it's going to be an uphill, um, you know, sort of battle to get uh, folks and, you know, especially advisors to, to understand why you longer reset period is, 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 you know, one advantageous and frankly, mutable for clients. Okay. And uh, what are the fees on these uh, new ETFs? One, then there are other expenses on top based on, you know, uh, how big the funds are and that sort of thing, you know, gross and, and, and uh, gross expense ratio. They're different for each fund. Okay. And then finally, I want to ask you, um, you know, you're already talking weekly, monthly, quarterly, how far out could these uh, reset periods go or are they, is that, is this it? No, uh, listen, it's something we've looked at. Um, we're kicking around the idea. The problem is the longer you go on the, the period, the tougher it is to get to that leverage multiple. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in other words, having a two times yearly or semi-annual um, in, in a volatile asset would be, uh, you know, like a, like an NVIDIA or a Tesla, Jeff would be uh -huh. nearly, um, you know, something like a spy or QQQ, uh, two times might be a little bit, might be a little bit tough. So for now we're going to stick with our weekly monthlies and quarterlies. And again, it all depends on the investors, you know, sort of investment horizon. But again, we feel that, you know, over the longer term, the longer period resets, will be more consistent in delivering returns that are, you know, within expectations of, you know, the, the end investor. Okay. Well, we're going to keep an eye on this, <clears throat> see where this goes, see what kind of uh, traction you gain here. And uh, maybe you'll come up with those uh, inverse versions at some point. And uh, we're also going to see if anybody, anybody copies you guys, but uh, we're going to leave it there. Matt Markowitz. Head of Product and Capital Markets at Trader ETFs, uh, a, an ETF brand of Axis Investments. I'm Jeff Benjamin, Wealth Management Editor, and you're listening to Advisor Insider, powered by ETF.com. Go to check out ETF.com, check out the Advisor Center. Everything there is for financial intermediaries. We're, we're setting it up for you. If you want to reach me, find me on X. My handle is at Benji Writer, or you can email me, Jeff. Dot Benjamin at ETF.com. Thank you very much, folks.